Ladies and gentlemen, men and women, boys and girls, welcome to the most must watch Besway TV. My name is Vatican Kayembe, and uh, today we are with Mama. Mama, welcome back again. Welcome. Thank you very much. So now, I know it's been a long time, but thank you very much for sticking around with us because we are here. You know what the show is all about. Every single time we are here, we've got a message to pass. And Mama always bring us good news, good education about our own health. So today we're talking about HIV and pregnancy. We're going to ask Mama some questions here, which is a very, very key questions, very important questions about can a woman living with HIV get pregnant and deliver a baby HIV free? And then how do you take care of the, of the baby after the baby is born? You know, Mama, first of all, before I ask you this question, mm. you were away. How was your holiday? My holiday was good. Because the last time you were here, we told people two weeks, but we need to apologize to people that, yes. sorry, we did more than two weeks. Yes, we did. We did. So we apologize. Yeah. But the good thing is, we are back. Yes. So, quick question, Mama. Mm. Can... A woman living with HIV mm -hmm. get pregnant, mm -hmm. deliver a baby HIV free. That's our first question. Yes, uh, yes, it's possible, but there are conditions to it, really. Um, um, that uh, that the woman has to go through. The woman has when they know that they are pregnant. If they don't know their status, every woman should be tested anyway when they go to register for their pregnancy. That is one of the conditions that they need to go for an HIV test to make sure they are HIV free, they don't have HIV. Because um, then the strategies will be put in place for you to actually deliver a child mm -hmm. without HIV. But, yeah, you're talking from perspective of where we are or the worldwide? We, we, we are talking of where we are and worldwide i mean the the in uh, we we will talk of scotland which okay. is or the united kingdom which is mm -hmm. they've got regulations yeah. which is uh, british hiv association beaver mm -hmm. which states mm -hmm. um what should be done with the medical uh, fraternity yeah. when a young woman uh, presents at, at a clinic or post at a hospital saying that she's pregnant, mm -hmm. they will, especially if you are from sub-Saharan Africa, mm -hmm. they will test you for HIV. And they will ask you if you want to be tested. And you should say yes, okay. because it will protect your unborn baby. Because once they know your status, if you are positive, mm -hmm. then they will tell you what to do. And you go through that journey. And it's not a journey you're going to go through alone. So you will get a lot of support. Just to make it perfectly clear, that means like every single woman who gets pregnant in Scotland, they go under HIV test. If, if you are from Sub-Saharan Africa, yes, you are supposed to. You, you are supposed, supposed to or is yes. it mandatory? That you it have is to? mandatory because then it protects your child from having HIV. Okay. So if you know Sub-Saharan? If, you know, I'm talking of, we are talking about uh, black health. African, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are talking about African health. Okay. Yes, but you know, you, you should you should get to know your, your status. status. Yes. Okay, you've answered that question very well then. Uh, that means like uh, no worries in that area because mm. uh, they, they'll test you anyway whether you like it or not. Yeah. Now, since we're talking about you know, because there's people now in Africa, you know, mm. that are probably in a, in a village, but they are HIV positive. Do they know, if they know they are HIV positive, yes, you can still get pregnant and you can still the, carry a baby. We're talking in a, in a circumstance where you don't know. Because here, the chance is, no matter whether you like it or not, if you follow pregnant, you get registered. That's what you say. Mm -hmm. You get registered and then they'll know your status mm -hmm. and then they'll tell you and then they'll, take, they'll put you under certain... Uh, uh, provision or service that you need to follow mm -hmm. in order for the baby to be born HIV free. Yes. Now we're talking about people that they don't know in Africa in a village and then they just realize that Yes, but in Africa they are, they are doing they are doing the same as well. When you go to but in the villages or Yes, the when you go to register because okay. when you get pregnant uh -huh. even in a village in Africa yeah. you go to the clinic, isn't it? Yeah. Where you 
you tell them that you are pregnant mm-hmm. and the nurse looks at you and like they do the necessary blood tests and one of the conditions is that they do an HIV test so that that is UNAIDS uh, policies so that they make sure you do not have mm-hmm. HIV mm-hmm. and when they realize you do have HIV mm-hmm. if your tests come out positive they then put you on treatment. Remember when we spoke last time yeah. that when you go for an HIV test, mm-hmm. now the policy worldwide mm-hmm. is that test and treat. Okay. So you, you, you are tested, you turn out positive, you are put on treatment. Okay. Now, uh, uh, <coughs> Mama, let's not be ignorant here. Mm. Because in Africa, we can tell like there's a people that they follow pregnant. Mm. They never went to the doctor once. That one I can be sure of because there's um, villages where there's no there's no clinics, and uh, people that follow pregnant, they deliver without any test. So in that circumstance, how they how are they meant to know that okay, my I am HIV positive and I need to but protect my this baby. Is this, this is the whole point. We we we, we are talking about. Um, I know I'm shifting you a little bit yes, because we this are talking is the, about North Scotland. Yes, we are talking about Scotland, but also around black health. Yes, exactly. But at the same time, in Africa, I would say every person should know their status. And I've always emphasized that. Whether you're a teenager, you're a married woman, a married man, you're whatever. Once in a while, go for that HIV test so that you know you are... HIV free or you are HIV positive and if you are HIV positive you are put on treatment whether you are living in villages and I think the death rate of HIV in sub-Saharan Africa has actually gone down since the introduction of antiretroviral therapy so I do not see why people are, not, are still in this day and age not getting tested for HIV because it's really important that people do get tested for HIV because okay. for a woman to for a young woman to get pregnant and then they find they are HIV positive. When they are living in the United Kingdom, they have to, they will test them and then they will encourage them to go on treatment because according to the regulations yeah. here, you have to go on treatment to, in order to incre- to reduce your viral load, mm-hmm. which is the HIV viral load in your blood system mm-hmm. so that you do not pass it on to your child. To your child. Yeah. Now, after the baby is born, how do you take care of the baby, still protecting them, protecting them from but catching HIV? What, once you... Because you, you breastfeed them, there's a lot of things around it. You yes. cut their hair, mm. uh, you, you take care of uh, their hygiene, and uh, anything could happen. So how do you take care of them, protecting them from catching this, HIV? This, 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 this mother, when she's tested and she's uh, HIV positive, when she's pregnant, She's on, put on treatment, and most of the time they are monitoring you regularly, and uh, they are monitoring to see where your viral load is, because the viral load is the one that is quite important, in the sense that if you have dictatable viral load, which means if you've got uh, high levels of viral load mm-hmm. in your blood, it's very easy to transmit to the someone. HIV virus to somebody. But when you take the medication mm-hmm. and it suppresses your viral load to what we call undictatable, mm-hmm. you do not pass on the virus to anybody. Even if uh, you cut your blood and uh, you use it, the same thing to some, with someone else? It, it, the chances are that you don't pass... The, it says this is why there is now what they call you is equals to you. And undictatable is equal to untransmittable. You are not going to cut your blood and say take my blood because it says I've got... You don't do that. We never do things like that. No, you could cut you, yourself and you're trying to put a, a earring uh, piece in your... You're not trying to do whatever with your child. No, Anything you, do, could you, happen. Anything, you, don't do, you don't do that. We, we don't do... You, you are taking extreme cases. <laughs> and, and I'm talking of ordinary day life. Yeah, but... And you are a mother... You cut, you cut, you, you yes, cut the when nail you, of when your you, child yes, with, a, with a razor. Yes. You could use that before you, to yourself and then say, okay... Yeah, but if you cut your, 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 your daughter's with a nail clipper, it doesn't mean when you take that nail... If, as a mother, I'm a mother living with HIV, and I cut my, my nails, doesn't mean I can't use that same clipper to, touch my, to cut my child's nails, because... My viral load is undictatable. 
they will not get that HIV from me. So why would there be anything extraordinary that I need to do? There's nothing. You just behave like anybody who anybody doesn't have a, anybody else who doesn't have HIV. The only thing I would say is, in this country, they encourage mothers uh, not to breastfeed but to go on formula milk, because the reason is that the you know in in Scotland you get free formula milk, so you can't go out and say I couldn't afford to buy the formula milk. Mm -hmm you will get the formula milk for free. So they encourage you to put your child on formula milk. Culturally, a lot of Africans will say, people are going to ask me why I'm not breastfeeding mm -hmm. and I need to bond with my child. That is a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. And if you really feel, or your mother-in-law is going to be asking why you are not breastfeeding, they will then say to you, you breastfeed for the first six months, okay. only breastfeed. Nothing else, breastfeed for the first six months. And yeah. then after that, you stop breastfeeding. You can then give your child formula milk, but you are no longer breastfeeding. You are no longer doing anything. So breastfeeding is not like writing it out of the picture completely because they have come to the, they, it has come to the realization that uh, certain cultures actually expect mothers to breastfeed. breastfeed yeah. And so if you are a mother living with HIV mm -hmm. and your virus is undetectable, you can breastfeed for six months and you just feed that child with your breast milk. Now, the question I have is, you know, <clears throat> yes, the baby is born. Mm. From what you are saying, after you go, you register and they've mm. detected and they'll put you under certain you know uh, a service mm. fall and the baby will be born mm. HIV free mm. how do you know that the baby is born they HIV test free? the baby test at the baby. birth the baby is tested and then they test the baby uh, monthly I think according to Biva if I can remember very well there are there are regulations that are that are set out by Biva I think they do it monthly for the first three months and then they test the baby Finally, the final test that is done is at 18 months, which really then tells them that the child is not HIV positive. The reason being that uh, um, when a child is born from the first day to 18 months, they still carry their mother's antibodies. So, you know, they might, those antibodies, you know what I mean by mm -hmm. antibodies, they carry their mother's antibodies. So they, those antibodies are still might still show that they are positive. But they do special tests, which means at 18 months, that child is actually doesn't carry their mother's antibodies. That, They've got their own antibodies. So that, those antibodies mm -hmm. will show the doctors that the child yeah, does not have HIV. HIV. And that, the tests are done, like when the child is born immediately, mm -hmm. they know that the child, the ch you know, medical technology is, is really improving on HIV. So there's no need. Uh, and I've had cases of young women here mm -hmm. getting pregnant, and then when they go and get tested at the clinic, their husband be harasses them, beats them, divorces them, leaves them because they've been told they are HIV positive. positive yeah. Actually, you do not do that because the interventions that are in place today are, are there to protect the woman. They are there to protect the baby. Yeah, the they are also. there to protect you as, as the husband as well. So coming up with all sorts of excuses mm -hmm. on, I'm going to live here because she's got HIV. Oh, you don't even know your status because most of those husbands refuse to go and get tested. Mm -hmm. And they are harassing this poor girl no. and they don't even know their status themselves. Yeah, so is it 100% like... Uh, a woman is living with HIV can 100% after being like uh, diagnosed. Yeah, and then it's we, 90, we can about a baby. We can never 100%. say we can never say 100%. I mean, there's 99 point, you know, but it's most most babies born in the United 99. Kingdom point something something. Okay. But most babies born in the United Kingdom today to mothers living with HIV are not HIV positive. Mm -hmm. It's very rare, and I you know in in my working life. In the HIV sector, mm -hmm. I know of one young woman who refused to get an HIV test, and it turned out when she, a baby was born, that baby had HIV because that she was living with HIV, HIV, and she didn't know she was living with HIV, and that was a long time ago. And I'm talking of something like 
10, 15 years ago when that happened. Mm -hmm. And that child was born HIV positive. And that could have been avoided yeah. because if she had listened to the medical doctors and mm -hmm. advices mm -hmm. that she should have an HIV test, she should have gone ahead with it. But her reason was that mama was afraid to have this HIV test. And I told them, and at that time they didn't force people to have an HIV test. But I think now it's mandatory because what's the point of having these interventions in yeah. place and not using them mm -hmm. and protecting the next generation. So do you think if someone is HIV positive, mm. a woman is HIV positive, mm. she's living with HIV, mm. do you think when she, fall, she falls pregnant, is, is uh, the level of uh, effectiveness, like uh, the way she's going to get affected, mm. is it going to be worse than someone who is not living with HIV or is... It's the same, it's just like everybody else, you know. I, I, I would I'll give you, I think pregnancy is pregnancy. It doesn't really matter whether you've got HIV. And it also depends with the level. If, let's say, you are HIV positive and you're not on treatment, you get pregnant. Obviously, when you get pregnant, because you've got an underlying condition, that pregnant might be a slightly difficult, but it doesn't mean it's going to be that much more difficult mm. than somebody who doesn't have HIV. Mm -hmm. So if you have got morning sickness, uh, every other woman has morning so sickness. It so it really doesn't matter. But my, my issue with, uh, with young women who get pregnant is that they need to get tested so that they do not pass on the virus okay. to their unborn child. Okay. And it, it, it is important. It is important. It is an important you know, thing that they need to do. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mama here. I thank you again all the answers that probably you wanted to hear about this topic here, HIV and pregnancy. Please subscribe to our YouTube Baseway TV and then uh, Facebook Baseway TV. Leave us comment or whatever suggestion you have about this show because today the phone is not on. So <coughs> just uh, write to us and then we'll get, we'll get in touch if possible or we'll read your comment and it will take care of that. So Mama, mm. now... You said 99 point something, mm. so it's not 100 percent. No, nothing is 100 percent. Anything we do in science is not 100 percent, is it? Okay. And nothing is ever 100 percent. Science, science gives you the evidence. Yeah, say, but okay. science gives us the evidence that, you know, even when we did the U is equals to U, when they did the, 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 the research which took place, uh, you know, it came up with 19 point, 99 point something or 98 point something. It wasn't 100%. But it really proved that if you have an undictatable viral load, the chances of you passing on the HIV yes. virus uh -huh. to the next person is, was, is, is very slim. Okay. It's very slim. So my attitude is I couldn't sit here and say, it, it, you know, it's 100%. But it reduces the chances of you passing on the HIV to Now, child. since it's not 100%, do you, do, you, do, you, do you think it's okay? How do they encourage the delivery of the baby? That's the question. They inc Is it uh, normal delivery or it because it's not 100%, maybe try to avoid more C-session? <laughs> uh, they, they, I think here they encourage a cesarean. I remember I came here after my childbearing age, so I've never had a child in here. But what I've read is mostly C-section they would encourage you to have c-section because c-section is really protective you know in the birth canal if 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 you have uh, uh, high levels of uh, viral mm -hmm. virus in you mm -hmm. it sits in the birth canal okay. it always sits in, in in all these wet places so we you know, they would encourage you to have a C-section. Oh, so I thought this was more dangerous than the normal one. <coughs> why, why would it be dangerous to have C-section? Because they cut you and the, the blood and probably that's what they say. That's, a, that's the only way you transfer, like... Uh, uh, Not necessarily. I mean, like I said to you, it's you is equals to you. Your virus, your virus is so undictatable that even if the blood gets to your child, it doesn't affect the child. So they do C-section. And they take the right precautions to get the baby out of your tummy, and you, your your do, your child will not have the virus. And they do encourage C-section. Okay. Mm. So now I think we've asked you all the questions I needed to ask you, but uh, we have people that they are watching, and um, do you have 
before I, I ask you the last question, mm. I'd like to say, do you have anything else like you think you wanted to let young or young women or women out there about like uh, uh, HIV and pregnancy, like how they should take care of themselves, how they should uh, behave in terms of when they are uh, pregnant and they know that they're HIV positive? You know, you don't have to behave in any way. When you are pregnant, you are a very vulnerable person. You look after yourself. Pregnancy is very difficult and it's a vulnerable time. Nine months carrying somebody in your stomach mm. is hard. It's not easy. But people just need to look after themselves. Eat well, sleep well. You some, know, some people they say like women they make it look easy. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's not easy. It's 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 it's, it's, it's you're bringing out a human being. It's not easy. So I, I really do believe that whether HIV positive or negative, you still need to look after yourself. And I, I know a lot of young women that have come to me and said, but I'm HIV positive, I can't have a child. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can have a child because there's no difference. As long as you're on medication, you can still have your child and carry a full-time baby and have a healthy baby. And that baby does not have to have HIV. What do they say? Like, what do they say? Like, I'm HIV positive and then I cannot have a child. Uh, is that because in terms of like they will, they will always use condom or what? They are scared. They don't know what to do because a lot of people. One of the things I've learned is that most of us don't read. There's a lot of information out there, mm. but we don't really sit down to read, and 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 understand our conditions. Yeah. Uh, if you live with a condition, be it diabetes, be it HIV, be it whatever, read about it. Read all the literature that is out there. Because res research is continuous. There's re continuous research happening. Mm -hmm. And things are happening. Technologies are moving. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the, they are able to help you. And especially if you are living in Scotland, and which is where we are addressing this issue the, the the hospital the clinics are good at helping you with these things and to address your concerns so about the baby what's our advice to them keep in touch with your with your doctors mm -hmm. and your consultant and your clinic and keep in touch with them and if you need support we are there as outside organizations as I have I said we have got a, an organization in Glasgow yep. called Hupenyu. Mm -hmm. Come and see us and we can walk you through that journey. What's your contact we, number anyway? Because you will never give your, your, your office contact number. Because yeah. that's that's best way number. Yeah. And then uh, they, you can they can phone that number. Okay. My phone number is zero one four one okay. uh four one eight zero nine four zero. Okay, that's your office number. That's my office number. Okay. They can phone us. We have got what we call PM mental mothers. Mm -hmm. These are young women that we trained who live in the community uh -huh. and they they have gone through the journey of being HIV positive mm -hmm. and having their babies so they can walk you through that journey of being HIV positive you are a woman living with mm -hmm. HIV and there are also women with living with HIV so they can walk you through that journey of having your baby so that that anxiety of thinking whether is my baby going to be HIV negative or mm -hmm. HIV positive what's going to happen how am I they will help you through that journey mm -hmm. and they are They've done it themselves. Some have got two, three children now, and they had them all yeah, when they were HIV positive. So I don't think it's something to be really scared of. Okay, it's not something to be scared of. Ladies and gentlemen, we've heard from Mama. We've heard all she had to say about uh, HIV and pregnancy. So now we know a woman living with HIV can still be a baby, <coughs> can still get pregnant, and can still give uh, birth the baby and the, you said they encourage more uh, c-section mm. instead of normal delivery so what is that is that to avoid to avoid because you said that like, the virus uh, I don't, you know maybe it's better for you to have c-section i mean <laughs> <laughs> anyways okay so uh, they encourage more c-section no, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't matter so you can have it anyhow just like uh, everybody else when you are pregnant and you are living with HIV, but and then you breastfeed your baby if for six you months. Are, if you are undictatable, yeah. let's not forget 
you have to be on treatment. Yeah, you have to be. That's a condition. Yes, that's a condition. You have to be on treatment. So the only way and to yes. give a, a birth yes. to a baby. Yes, you have HIV to be HIV free. Yes, you, ha- you need to be on. on a you treatment. have to be on antiretroviral therapy. Okay, and you have to take it. You have to adapt your treatment. Yeah. So that your viral load is undictatable. Mm-hmm. That is the crucial condition. Okay. The, you know, you, you cannot be taking medication willy nilly and your viral load doesn't go down and you expect to have a baby who's HIV free mm. or you expect to breastfeed because that is not going to happen. You need to take your medication. Everything is based on your taking your antiretroviral. So that means uh, young mummies are there. Our mothers, if you are HIV, you're living with HIV, that means you have a huge responsibility, not just for yourself, also for the baby that you are bringing here on the earth so that way they don't get affected by the virus. And uh, Mama, we are trying to wrap up this, mm. uh, this show to, tonight. And um, I think I've got a question. Uh, this question may look a little bit silly, mm. but it's a normal question. Mm. Well, normal question or silly question. Okay. Maybe a silly question deserves deserves a, a silly answer. <laughs> There's no silly question, actually. There's no silly question. Ask. Uh, see, if you give birth mm. to the baby, mm. now, just t- how do you take care of them? No, do you worry about uh, about uh, like, oh, maybe I do this, my but, child may, but, or but all new babies. When you have a new baby, you worry. When even if you don't have HIV. When you have a new baby, you worry about the baby. Does it mean like if you have you you are HIV positive and you knew that I am living with HIV and then I've given a birth to my baby yeah. and she's HIV free? Do you worry like you may pass her on in that perspective? No, you, if you understand what I'm talking about, because you may be avoiding maybe razor or anything like that or stuff like that. Because everything why you are saying you, is not why, 100%. Why, why, why would you want to use razor on your child? You use razor, like, well, 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 why would you different. want to use a razor blade people on your child? Different. People are different. Really, to be quite honest. I mean, I know in, in, in my culture, when a child is born, uh, the grandmother comes with a clean razor blade and they shave off the hair because they say this new the, the, the hair that the child is born mm-hmm. with should not be kept in the head. But you use a new yeah. razor blade. But so, some, people, some people they say it's, it's new in terms of like, oh, they just use it quickly, less, you know? You know, you, you are talking of extreme conditions. Well, I, what, what people I can, are people and uh, stuff what, like that may happen. What, so what do you tell to people what, what that I, they... What, what I am saying is... Any new mother, mm-hmm. regardless of their HIV status, worries about their new baby. There is that worry. Even when they are sleeping and they don't cry for some time, you think they are dead. You go to check if they are still breathing. So, because you are a new mother, but, right? Uh-huh. So when you have HIV mm-hmm. and you are adhering to your treatment and you are in contact with your health professionals mm-hmm. and you are in contact with your clinic, mm-hmm. You have no need to worry. Okay. You have the worries of every mother who's had a new baby, okay. whether they are HIV positive or not. But your HIV is under control because you are taking your medication. You, your viral load is undictatable. Therefore, you do not pass it on to your child. And that is for you. you do, there's no need to worry. Why are we looking at the one point something percent that doesn't really, that you don't know, because it's, you know, science has told me 90, 99%, or even if it was 90%, I would still believe science, because it's, it's that great, isn't it? But it's, it's more than 90%, so why am I even bothered, you know? Thank you very much, Mama. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching us. You've heard everything, so you don't need to worry as long as you're on a treatment. You just need to take your, medi- your medication, you need to see your GP, your doctor, you, your consultants, your, your consul- clinic, yeah, your, your, your clinic, your consultants, yes. or your, 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 your whatever. My mom's laid it out. So you have it. Now all we're asking you is to share this video for the awareness. Share among your friend, your community. You don't know by sharing this video, you may save someone's life. You may save someone from making a, a huge mistake and then causing the innocent baby to be affected by the virus of HIV. So now, 
Mama, we are at the end of our show. Thank so you. when do we see each other again? In two weeks' time. In two weeks' time. Mm-hmm. So guys, there you go. You have a, in two weeks' time. We have again, Mama. So you did not say your name at the beginning. So oh my! The people they know they my don't name. Know, because we, uh, yeah, they might have forgot. Okay, you know. my name is. We should Rosanne. have done this at the beginning, but yes. unfortunately, I forgot. My name Very is professional, isn't it? Yeah, my name is Rosanna Bankhead. And what do you do? I I run a charity called Hupenu, mm-hmm. which is based in Glasgow, and uh, we see a lot of young women, we see a lot of young men, we see a lot of African people uh, with very many various health issues, mm-hmm. uh, which. I mean, we we even work around mental health. And these are things that we as Africans are not addressing Mm -hmm. in our communities because we're constantly hiding and pretending it's not happening because of the stigma, because of the fear of of being isolated. Do you you think it's it's okay to remind people that you are not just saying this out of blue, it's that you have the experience? Yes, I have the experience and I've said it. I mean... They look at their vid- other videos. Mm-hmm. I've gone through this experience, yeah. and there's a lot of stigma. I am, and I'm, then you have the reason, yes, to believe and to encourage people, yes, to 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 engage with to engage ser- with and services, to yes. follow the treatment, and yes. everything. You yes, have every yes. single reason to tell people. Yes, that. I have. So I have. it's good to take so, your word for it. Yes, because it's not just. I'm not just saying this because I want to be heard. Uh-huh. I'm saying it because I've lived the experience, and therefore. It, it, it is important for people to know their status. Yeah. It is important. If you, the, what I always say, there is life after HIV. The, actually, there is better life after HIV. Because then you get to know and look after your own health. No, I think you are making people that they are, no, they are HIV free jealous a little bit. <laughs> not really. I'm, I'm not trying to. But I'm just saying for those people who... Who have it? Yeah, they no, shouldn't I, I, I'm, feel. I'm joking, Mama. I'm joking. Yeah, they shouldn't feel <laughs> that the world has come to an end yeah. because they have had this diagnosis. Mm. No, this diagnosis is not the end of the world. Yep. It will open other doors that you actually do not know. Definitely. Yeah. So thank you very much, guys. And there you go. You have it all. And share our videos and listen us. Let's see us again the next time. Again on the same time. Usually it's a half three. We start, but unfortunately, we started a little bit late today. Uh, and we'll see you next week. And uh, Mama, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And for thank you, me. you for watching. Oh, one thing I need to ask is to share our video. Please share and leave your comment below. Thank you very much. As for now, we're saying bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.